Well, I think it's really important in terms of addressing men on this topic to remember that there are three billion men on this planet and they are a very heterogeneous group. And so what would be the correct approach for one man is not necessarily the correct approach for all. And so what I've spoken about is the, uh, there's a spectrum of, of experience and receptiveness to I would call feminism. And so there are opponents at one extreme of the spectrum and there are champions at the other and in between there are other categories. And you've got to be able to think who is your audience before you determine what's the right approach for them. And so once you've understood, are they already predisposed towards uh, women as equal partners, as leaders, then it's one approach. But if they're not there yet, don't try to assume that they're ready to have that conversation because it's not one they're all comfortable with. But we can, with, with that kind of uh, nuanced approach, bring them up that ladder. So, so, and I talked about the spectrum of, and I'm actually referring to five categories. So the opponents are at one extreme, then there's skeptics, and then there's a group in the middle which are uncommitted. I'm gonna just focus on, on those two in a sense because those are the ones that are not necessarily most comfortable. And they are ones that are willing, they're open, they are willing to have the conversation, they're not yet comfortable with the conversation. And so the best thing is to really have those conversations in the settings where they are comfortable. So they may not be comfortable with the topic, so then make sure the setting is one that's comfortable for them. So it's more likely to be in private. It's not likely to be wise to challenge them in front of others because they're likely to react defensively. So if you take someone who is a skeptic and discuss with them in a place, maybe it's at the dinner table or it's in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you're much more likely to get results that can be favorable over time than if you try to just sort of dive them in, the, uh, throw them in the pool to start with. Gender disparities are important for everybody because we all have a stake in it. Um, I'm a very big believer that actually we need feminism right now to make sure that women have opportunities equal to men, but very soon I think I'm hopeful that we will get to a point where it's not feminism but equalism that we are really working towards, whereas there's opportunities that men also are not being given because of stereotypes that we have, you know, in terms of child care, or in terms of certain industries where uh, it's not seen yet as normal for men to do certain roles or to have certain pursuits. And so I think men are also in their own confined boxes in their societal spaces, which as we are able to open up all of those, women and men will both gain, but also just by, even if it's not for men having new opportunities for themselves, they will benefit by having more women to work with, it'll expand their horizons in terms of new ideas, and, um, and it's just, it's going to be beneficial for men in many ways that they may not fully realize yet. Well, it starts at the top. It's a cliche, but it's so true that the leader, whether it's a CEO or a chairman or chairwoman, um, has, to be, has to be committed to it. If they are, then they're likely to raise it as a priority, not necessarily always the top priority, that may not be appropriate, but it should be a priority, which is then something that the rest of management of an organization feels is important to the organization because it's in the organization's best interests. And that's where, when you have, and if maybe, it's, it's also possible that the person at the very top is not fully comfortable or an expert on these issues, but as long as they understand that it is important, they may bring in others to the management team or, or specialists, maybe consultants, who can have that con contagious effect on the rest of the organization. And then it's gonna be a question of repeatedly, constantly challenging people to get out of their comfort zone and to do things that are not status quo, because that's the only way we're gonna make progress, is if people do things that they may feel, okay, this is strange, do we really need to take these extra measures? But extra measures is the only way we're gonna make progress. No, it, it, it won't change unless it's happening throughout the organization. And that means there should be a culture where people at entry level feel like they can ask things. And there should be increasingly uh, in our society the support for people to ask these questions. They should know the kinds of questions they should ask, whether it's, we, we talked this morning about asking for a raise or, or negotiating for a higher pay to begin with, which is the kind of thing that 
Um, as long as those questions start at the, at the bottom, then people at every level will be forced to confront those questions and have to provide answers. And I think then hopefully the top and the bottom levels will be able to, to meet in an organization that is moving forward holistically. Life is at its worst when we're at the extremes. Where there, when any behavior is allowed to run too far to an extreme, when any culture is too far to an extreme, that's where problems occur. The work I do is primarily in the realm of politics, and we've seen it for hundreds of thousands of years, uh, hundreds if not thousands of years, where uh, politics has been dominated by men, um, and that has resulted in many good things, but many bad things. And the bad things include uh, wars, which um, is something that most of the countries that have gone to war have been led by men. Um, we're now in a situation where there is an environmental crisis. Now we have to look at our entire system of values and see, you know, are we making the right choices? Are we prioritizing things correctly? So we're out of balance. And I think, again, in the, in the work that I do, it's about political decision making. And until we have political decisions that are made equally by women and men, we're not going to be getting the balance that we need for survival of our species.